This week on The Gadget Show Web TV, Dion's helping you get rid of spyware from your computer. And John's got a first look at the latest photo printer from Epson. Plus, the latest in gadget tech news. Welcome to The Gadget Show Web TV. I'm John Bentley. And I'm Dion South. Later, I'll be showing you how to find spyware on your computer and get rid of it once and for all. But first, I've been trying out a new all-in-one printer from Epson. You don't normally expect all-in-one printers to look good, but Epson have certainly managed it with their latest premium all-in-one, the PX800FW. It looks very stylish indeed. The obvious question is, does the performance match the looks? Well, initially I was a bit put off by the software install on a Mac, particularly I felt as though I was installing it about eight times. But I soon got over that because the delight of this machine is this touchscreen interface, or more precisely, a three and a half inch touchscreen here with touch sensitive buttons to either side. You can use it to control all the machine's main functions, photocopying, faxing, scanning, um, all the maintenance functions as well. And it really is very intuitive and a delight to use. The actual paper trays are a bit flimsy though, and I suppose they are just about up to the job. There's smaller areas here for, for photo paper or whatever, A4 sheets go underneath. And the uh, connectivity of the machine is very impressive indeed, as well as the fax function. There's Wi-Fi, there's a card reader here, an Ethernet connection, and a CD tray that pops out at the touch of a button. There's even a mode I haven't seen before on a printer. It's called a colouring book, and this means you can put a photo on the uh, scanning bay and turn it into a sort of colouring book template for your kids. I can't see myself using that, but I suppose it could be fun. What about the printing quality, though? Well, on text, um, it's quite quick. It's about 20 seconds to print out an A4 sheet from hitting the button to it being delivered, although the actual text quality, this is my standard uh, test print here, is a bit greyish. The blacks aren't actually that deep, and there's a slight sort of purplish tone to the text. Photo quality is brilliant though, it's quite fast on these as well. I got 2 minutes 17 seconds from pressing the button to getting my print and it is very good indeed. Uh, the blacks and the black and white are superb, the colours are really really strong, it's got this lovely gloss finish. So it could be a very good choice if you fancy doing a lot of photo printing from your all-in-one. Also, the photocopying is quite good and the scanning's good too, with the scanning software that gives you a good range of options. What about costs, though? Well, we've done tests on the Gadget Show on a very similar printer to this, and the actual costs of the ink are 62p each A4 top-quality photo print, which is towards the high end of middling. Canon's printers are significantly cheaper, but uh, I do find with Canon's inks they're not as durable. Kodak's uh, prints are much cheaper to do, and uh, also pretty durable in my experience, so the colours aren't as luscious as the Epson's. I think uh, there's the additional problem with Epson's is you tend to waste quite a bit of ink charging the uh, print head every time you turn the printer on and off. I suppose you could use third-party inks, but uh, you know, obviously for the less important work, things you don't hang around for a while, like the kids' homework, for example, but um, uh, it seems a shame on a printer that's as good as this. So, if you can afford to buy it, and if you can afford to run it, and particularly if you want top-quality photos from your all-in-one, Epson's PX800FW is an excellent choice. Great quality prints, it's just a bit too pricey. Why can't manufacturers make their inks more affordable? I don't think I could afford to run that printer. No, me neither. Anyway, time for the news. And first up, Pioneer has announced that they're developing a one terabyte Blu-ray disc. Now currently a dual layer Blu-ray disc has a capacity of 50 gigabytes, so that's a huge improvement. It won't actually appear until 2013, but Pioneer have also announced that they're developing 500 gigabyte and 400 gigabyte discs. Yes, the 400 gigabyte disc will have 16 layers, and you'll be happy to know that when it does hit the shelves, it will be compatible with existing players. Currently, there's just a read-only version available, set for release any time now until 2010, but you can expect a rewritable version in 2012. <laughs> Guitar Hero Arcade will be available very soon thanks to Activision's arcade developers Raw Thrills. And the most important feature is that owners will have the ability to download new tracks onto their machines via the internet, allowing them to personalise the tracks so that no two machines are the same. 
Machines are currently in production, so expect them to appear at an arcade or cinema near you very soon. Woohoo! I can't wait. <laughs> now, mobile phones are getting cheaper than ever. Currently, as we speak, from the car phone warehouse, you can pick up a Motorola W180 on orange, admittedly with a compulsory £10 top-up voucher, but for the price of just £2.88. You don't get web browsing, camera or video playback, but it does come with 40 ringtones if that's your thing. And in one respect, it's better than an iPhone. Really? It's got an FM radio. Oh. <laughs> now it's time for one of Dion's how-tos, her easy-to-follow guides that help you get the most from your tech. Yes, and this week it's all about getting that dreaded spyware off your computer. Spyware is a nasty thing to have on your computer, as it can covertly gather your information and activity without your knowledge, record your keystrokes as you type them, passwords, credit card numbers, get sensitive information where you surf, and can even take random screenshots of your activity. So basically, whatever you're doing on your computer is completely viewable by spyware. And any spyware stored on your computer can even monitor what you're doing, even when you're not connected to the internet. So here's the Gadget Show's guide for removing spyware. Spyware is easier than you think to pick up, such as clicking a button on a pop-up window, installing a software package or agreeing to add functionality to your web browser. These applications often use trickery to get you to install them, from fake system alert messages to buttons that say cancel, when really they do the opposite. Now getting stubborn spyware and adware off of your PC can be frustrating, but if you follow these easy steps it will make sure you're never affected by malicious spyware again. Firstly, I'd advise avoiding certain peer-to-peer -peer file sharing programs and networks if you want to keep spyware off your PC. Since a lot of these peer-to-peer -peer file sharing programs are free, the only way they can make money is by data mining, and this basically means the software will rummage through your data and pick out the key information. At times they install a program that simply monitors the keywords or tracks your website usage, sending the valuable information back to their servers. Next, I'd advise staying away from unknown toolbars, as this will help protect your computer from any further spyware infection. Some of the lesser known toolbars are actually data mining programs, and they send your traffic information back to their creators. It's then sold to marketing strategy companies to help them form a better advertising campaign. If you're sick and tired of being targeted by this kind of spyware, make sure you don't install any toolbars from unknown third-party companies. Also make sure you stay away from any windows or pop-ups that offer free downloads, especially the ones that offer to scan your computer for spyware when you haven't requested it. Anti-spyware ads are a clever way for spyware vendors to get into your system. Some people see pop-up windows like these and think it's their own computers prompting them. Unfortunately, it's not, so make sure you avoid them. As well as following these easy steps, I'd highly recommend investing in an internet security package such as Kaspersky. It'll defend your PC from any malicious spyware and easily remove any spyware that makes it through. It also acts as an antivirus software and firewall. But if you're looking for some free software, then I would recommend going to www.trendmicro.com forward slash housecall, as it is a free online software that will search and remove any spyware off your computer. So if you follow these simple steps, you will never have to worry about nasty spyware slowing down your system ever again. Good, I must admit spyware has never been a huge worry for me, but I guess it's worth running those checks just in case. Yes, but if you remove your spyware regularly, it'll keep your system in tip-top condition. Right, that's all we've got time for this week. Next week I've got a first look at a new rock laptop. And I'll be showing you how to upgrade the hard drive on your PlayStation 3.